Hello, hello, my name is Ed, and today I am once again marking out for Maker's Mark. Alright, so you may notice this video is coming out on a Saturday. That's weird. I never post stuff on a Saturday. Except, uh, Erica's out of town. I got nothing better to do. And next week is going to be all Irish stuff. So, if I don't shoot this now, we're going to have to put it off till two weeks from now. And I'm excited about this, so I want to drink it now. For those of you who haven't been following the Rock Cut Review, you may not know that I'm a little bit of a fan of Maker's Mark. I am. I am. Which is odd. You know, this is a very famous weeded mash bill bourbon, and I'm such a rye fan. I love those rye whiskeys. I love those high rye bourbons. So what is it about Maker's that just makes me fall in love? I don't know. Maybe it's a little nostalgia. Maybe it's that big, bright cherry note that Makers tends to have. Just something about it. I really like Makers. And I really, really like Makers Wood Finishing Series. The granddaddy of the series, so to speak, is Makers 46. And the whole idea is they're adding interesting different staves to barrels when they're finishing their Makers. So this is coming into its third year. First year was RC6. Second year was SE4 cross P something. And this year is actually two releases. That's kind of neat. We're getting two releases this year. I'm kind of excited about that. So this is the first one, F-A-E-01, which I think I'm just gonna pronounce Feo Uno from now on. What's interesting about this one is if you read the back of the bottle, and you look at some of the press that Maker's Mark has been doing around this, including a YouTube video featuring uh, Jane Bowie, the master of maturation at Maker's, they don't seem to be emphasizing the wood on this as much as other ones. The emphasis seems to be more on, as they say, paying homage to our unique copper still design and celebrate our non-chill filtration process. So they're really, so they're really talking up how their stills and not chill filtering brings out these fatty acid esters. Hence, F-A-E, fatty acid ester. I'm pretty sure that's what that stands for. So these esters that are created during fermentation and then make it through into the distillate, when they're put into wood, you know, they create all sorts of wonderful flavors, including some really fruity flavors. And of course, those fatty acids also, supposedly, and we'll get to test this, lead to a better, more viscous mouthfeel and finish. But what about the actual wood on this? From what I can ascertain, the wood on this is toasted virgin oak. However, they describe it as being seared on only one side. Now, I'm not sure what Searing is different from toasting, you know. I, I think of toasting and charring. Is searing just their term for what they did, or is it something specific? I would love to know more if Makers ever releases something about that. I would love to know exactly what the searing is. But as far as I can tell, and judging by the label, these are virgin toasted American oak staves. Apparently, they just seared or toasted one side of them. The idea being that that one side is gonna have a lot of wood extraction and the raw side is gonna have a lot of fruit forward elements in it and the whiskey is gonna get both. So half of the stave is raw. That's kind of freaky. So Feo Uno over here, they're saying is gonna really play up the tobacco and fruitiness and then Feo Two, they're saying they're really gonna focus on the texture and the viscosity and the mouthfeel that you're getting 
with this higher fatty acid ester whiskey. Let's see what happened with this one. I gotta say, they're right about this being a lot, a lot fruity. It's a very dark cherry. Almost kind of plummy or figgy. Dark, juicy fruit. Really, really, like, yeah, that dark, juicy plum. Maybe like a boiled plum, even. I don't think I'm getting much, well, maybe I'm getting a little tobacco. But it doesn't come off as super tobacco-y for me. It's almost more like some sort of herb. Like herbs de provenance mixed in with that super juicy dark cherry and dark plum. Like you put herbs de provenance on something. Like you, you, oh no, here's what it is. You put herbs de provenance down in the pan with some oil and start heating it up before you put your meat on it. That's what this kind of smells like to me. I guess it could be a little tobacco-esque, a little bit of like, you know, dry tobacco, but I'm getting more, more of that herbal note. Let's get a taste, huh? I do get some of that wood spice. There is some pepper there. It is dark cherry, it's plummy, it's juicy. It feels mouth coated. It does, it does. And the finish is hanging with me. That said, I, I don't think it's quite as special. I don't know, it doesn't seem quite as special as the previous releases. So there are some layers here. But for my taste, I don't think the this is quite as good as previous years. I think RC6 especially had those fun baking spices that were really, really strong and really stood out and meshed so well with that kind of maker's cherry note. This... Uh, there is spice. There's kind of that herbal clove, a, a clovey thing, I guess. But it's not as pronounced. And it kind of takes a backseat to just a lot, a lot of fruit. If you like a, a fruity whiskey, if you like dark cherry, if you like that plum, you'll probably really like this. And I, it's not that I don't like those tastes. It's just that I was expecting expecting maybe some more layers to it. It's got those red juicy fruits. So it kind of reminds me of a port finished bourbon. However, with a port finished bourbon, those flavors are so much more vibrant, so much more big and beautiful. And with this, it just seems kind of like a shadow of what a port finished bourbon is, which makes sense. They're not finishing it in port, they're finishing it with these virgin oak staves. See, I could get Woodenville port finish for $50, whereas this is 60 to $75 and doesn't feel like it's coming close to that big bright fruitiness. It's not that it's bad, and I'm sure there are people who are going to like these particular flavors, but compared to other things that do similar red and dark fruits, there are other bourbons that do it better. And compared to the its siblings in the finishing series, I think this is a very interesting example. I just don't think it's quite as good as, as those first two. So yeah, maybe this one didn't quite live up to my fanboy excitement. I guess we'll have to see what happens with FAE 02. Feo Dose. We'll see if that's any better. I. I'm hoping, I'm hopeful. Hope springs eternal, don't you know? But until next time, my name is Ed. This has been the Rock Cut Review. You can subscribe if you want to, like the video if you care to, and comment and tell me what makers is your favorite. But most importantly, you guys stay healthy, stay safe, and stay rotten.